Recording in progress. Thank you. Renee, we can start anytime you're ready. <clears throat> okay, Bong. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the specialty board of Philippine Psychiatry Orientation for our panelists. Um, for the upcoming oral diplomate examination, which will be starting this Friday. So I'll be serving as MC and moderator for tonight. Um, but before anything else, thank you for attending tonight. And more so, uh, we thank you very much for sharing your valuable time with PPA and committing to serve as panelists for this year's oral diplomate exams. So for um, our agenda for tonight, we'll be starting off with an invocation by Dr. Mitzi Buot to be followed by the opening remarks of our current vice chair of the certification board, Dr. Bong Buenaventura, which, um, and after that, we will be proceeding to the main chunk of our session tonight, which will be on the rubrics of the oral exam to be discussed by Dr. Bong as well the timelines of the exam to be discussed by Dr. Sally Del Valle. And lastly, uh, we will have our current chair, Dr. Romy Enriquez, to discuss how the virtual setup will be for the exams. And after that, we'll be opening the floor for possible questions or clarifications from our uh, panelists. So um, without much further ado, uh, may I call on Dr. Mitzi to um, give us an uh, invocation for tonight. Good evening, everyone. So let shall we put ourselves now in the presence of God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We humbly come to you, Holy Trinity, worshiping and thanking you for many answered prayers. You, our omnipotent God, are our protector and our refuge, especially in this time of pandemic. You, o omniscient God, are our true source of knowledge and wisdom. You are omnipresent God, are our faithful companion through the ages. You're always the same and true to yourself yesterday, today, and tomorrow. No matter what, we need not worry nor fear, only to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus, our King of glory, for by your death and resurrection, you have overcome the world. So we thank you, our God, as we are gathered here tonight, to affirm and declare that we are still in sovereign control of our sick and broken world. And in particular, for this second online oral diplomat board exam. The board asks you, Lord, especially that there be more qualified volunteer panelists who are available to take on those slots that are still needing volunteers. Help us with our Wi-Fi connectivity and with our time zone difference for those taking it abroad and those monitoring it in a different time zone. Give everyone the focus, concentration, strength, and calmness through the whole processes. We realize the enormity of this responsibility to certify to higher level of competency these examinings. Grant in tonight's meeting a common appreciation and understanding of this duty and responsibility. We ask Holy Spirit for your guidance and wisdom to enable each one to adjust to this new rubric and to the new procedure and technology. Enable us all to do this and to give our best, to give the objective assessment free from personal bias and give us discernment as we evaluate each examinee. Teach us also many things to improve on this so that we may be able to perform our task well. For as given, much is expected. To you, we are ultimately accountable. As we dispense these duties, may your will be done for your greater glory and honor in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. In the name Amen. of the Father, the Amen. Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Dr. Mitzi. Um, I would now like to call on Dr. Bong for the opening mm -hmm. remarks and uh, the discussion on the rubrics of the oral exam. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Renee. After Mitzi's invocation, I feel so pious and kind. Okay. 
So mabuhay at magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Tulad po na nabanggit ni Rene, uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight and at the same time for volunteering to be a panelist in, in terms of for our diplomate oral examinations. So we do appreciate your time and effort in helping us out uh, as we uh, prepare our young physicians, our young members in terms of our specialty. Okay. I'd also like to acknowledge the younger members of the group right now. So we've also we've also invited the residents in charge of the different institutions that are going to host the diplomate oral examinations. We are going to rely so much on these young physicians in terms of assisting us as we conduct and implement the oral examinations. Kaya wag po kayong magtaka kung may mga nakikita kayong mga mga bata-bata na kasamahan natin. Ano? Kasama na po dyan, kung nakikita niyo yung picture niya, si Vincent Delicena. Batang-bata, <laughs> mukhang bagong graduate students. Si Vincent po yata, Chief President ng EBMC. Tama po ba, Dr. Delicena? Wow, oh, merong Chief President ka dyan. <laughs> Ang bata nung picture mo eh. No? Okay. Graduation so, pick. <laughs> oh, graduation pick, college pa yata. Yan, beans naman. Ano? Okay. So, yun lang. So, thank you very much. And also for the training officers who are joining us tonight. Maraming, 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 maraming salamat din po. And for the panelists, ano, ako po yung pumukulit sa inyo sa email. At uh, kaya... Pasensya na po kung medyo marami dahil we really need to provide you a lot of information. Okay. So to proceed po, no, my next task is to go through the rubrics with you. For those, um, I'd just like to give some background about the rubrics that we are using for this year's Diplomate Oral Examination. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of our immediate, of the immediate chair of the specialty board, Dr. Tante Delia, who's, who's joining us tonight because he's also volunteered to be a panelist. Um, Tante, nag volunteer ka ba o napilitan ka lang? <laughs> okay. For so, the love, for the love <laughs> of you. <laughs> okay. So the reason I'm acknowledging Dr. Delia, kasi po, these rubrics were developed last year during the time that Dr. Delia was chair and Dr. Romy was vice chair. So what we did, po, as you know, when the pandemic started in 2020, we were not able to hold the diplomatic exams, both the oral and the written. And that's why we took the time to be able to plan much better in terms of how we are going to adjust to the demands of the pandemic situation. That's why in 2021, we were able to hold the written and oral examinations because we really prepared for it. And one way by which we prepared for it was to undergo several uh, uh, several trainings um, as far as the development of rubrics are concerned also, and also updating the processes of the oral examinations and at the same time developing better questions uh, for the written examination. And to assist us was the... Uh, uh, former head of the National Teachers Training College of uh, UP Manila, Dr. Nemuel Fahutagana. We had, I think, three or four sessions with him you know, because we really wanted to be able to prepare well and uh, to, do, to do, do our job really well. So what you have here is a distillation of that effort, okay? So primarily the efforts of Dr. Delia and Dr. Romi in terms of expanding what we learned uh, and distilling it into the rubrics that we have today. This was also based on the prior rubrics that we had before the pandemic, but we uh, modified it to suit the needs of particularly oral, I'm sorry, online examination. Okay, okay. so I'll just go through this. You, uh, Most of you are already familiar with this because you, if for those of you who have joined us last year, wala naman po kaming pinago, it's still the same. But for those who are joining us for the first time, I'm going to go through it so you have a better idea of how we'll be utilizing this. Okay. So we'll start with the general objective. Okay. So uh, as stated here, it's to evaluate the examinee's knowledge, skills, attitudes in assessment and management of a patient with psychiatric illness. And specific objectives will be in skills in conducting a comprehensive psychiatric interview, conducting concise physical, neurological, and mental status examinations, arriving at a diagnosis and differential diagnosis, the biopsychosocial case formulation, 
and a biopsychosocial case management. Because what we want is to be able to detect or identify the competencies of a specialist in psychiatry. And these are consistently obtaining histories that are accurate, concise, and relevant to the particular clinical presentations, performing accurate, concise mental status, neurological and physical examinations that are relevant to particular clinical presentations, identifies patterns of, or of signs and symptoms, and recognize phenomenology from the patient's history in order to generate a valid diagnostic hypothesis. Uh, develop a basic differential diagnosis for common and complex syndromes in clinical presentations, organize comprehensive formulations that clearly explain the etiology of particular clinical conditions, efficiently synthesize all information into a concise and valid formulation, apply the understanding of psychiatric, neurologic, and medical comorbidities to treatment strategies, devise an individualized management plan, cultivate positive relationships with patients, families, and healthcare team members. You will also see some uh, guidelines for the grading of the oral examinations. Okay. Um, essentially, uh, what will happen is that uh, we, will, we will send you a copy of the rate of the rubrics or the rating sheet. We will send you two forms, you know, the Excel sheet or the spreadsheet and a PDF printable form. Because for some of you, it may be challenging to uh, do it, to, to rate it online, like having a, a like, like you may have to have two gadgets, kasi, you know? but we can, we will also send you a printable PDF form. So that means you can uh, print it and then, you know, just fill up the scores and then you can send it back to us uh, via email. Or you can take a picture and send it also back to us via Viber. Okay. Now, um, each area, each item, or each criterion in the rubrics will be graded in terms of five levels. You know? Number one is unacceptable, number two, poor, number three, meets expectations, number four, good, and number five is excellent. I will show you later in the next tab the different uh, descriptions or descriptors that will be involved as far as rating the individuals are concerned. Okay. Um, if you have any questions at any time, you may either uh, unmute yourself or you can raise your hand so we can address it directly. You don't necessarily have to wait until the end uh, during the Q&A because, for example, some, 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 something that I may say may be unclear or may, may, may be in conflict in, in terms of what you actually know or what I may have said earlier. So please correct me at any time if that happens as well. We'd also like to emphasize that the that each examinee should get a total grade of three to pass. So the average, the final grade will, should be a three and that they should not have a grade lower than two in the four major domains. I'll show you later on which, what those four major domains are. Doctora Sally Del Valle will go through with you later on as far as in time management of the oral examinations. Kasi medyo mabosisi po, as you know, um, Medyo strict the timing because uh, we, we cannot overextend uh, because, you know, there are other, uh, at, like in the morning, there's there's going to be another exam in the afternoon. And in the afternoon, we have need time to be able to deliberate about what transpired during the day. That's why we want to manage the time as best as we can. Okay, so this is the second tab. This is the actual grading sheet. So this is where you are going to go when you start rating the examinee. So if you're using the spreadsheet or the Excel sheet, you will go to the second tab, which is, uh, and makikita niyo naman po yung pangalan sa baba, grading sheet. Okay. Now, you can just input yung name ng examinee. So for exam example, ang, ang examinee po ay si Romeo Enriquez. Gaganti lang po ako kasi ginagamit niya din ako example. Eh. Okay. So <laughs> si Romeo Enriquez, tapos ang examiner si Sino bang gusto mong examiner, Dr. Enriquez? Andito si Dr. Bimbo Diaz, gamitin natin siya. Okay. Sige, si Dr. Bimbo Diaz. So hopefully, uh, baka hindi po masakaya si Dr. Enriquez kay Dr. Diaz. Okay. So you can put that in. Ano, ano oh. Dr. Enriquez, yes. Yeah, actually, uh, this year, uh, isi-send na rin natin sila ng ano, parang link dun sa parang Google Sheets. Nakalista na yung pangalan. Okay, Think good. Think to type para hindi sila malito. Sige. So, we'll, uh, the day before, we'll send uh, the Google Sheet, which they can also download as an Excel file. 
Pero naka mm-hmm. nakapangalan na para pag nag-submit hindi sila hirap. Uh, hindi nakakalito yung file name. Um okay. Uh, ang so pangalan mean, nandun sa red yung candidate name examiner dun hmm. siya lalabas ka agad Romy, do they download the, the, the Google Sheet or do they answer directly? They can answer directly sa Google Sheet, they can also download it as Excel, then send it back to us Okay. para okay. lang so, hindi na, nalilito sa uh, file name yeah. so, okay, so Romy, do, do, do they need to scan first? Scan the, the uh, the PDF and for then those, fill it up. For those who download a PDF, they can write uh, manually. Then they take a picture or scan, and they send us by email mm-hmm. or viper. Okay. So for those who are going to uh, access the uh, spreadsheet via Google Drive, okay. So as as mentioned by Dr. Enriquez, you can answer directly. You can. Click the link, open it, and then answer directly. Or you can download it and save it on your on your computer. Okay, if if that will be easier for you. But I think if if it were me, I will just um, click the link and then answer directly on the sheet that is saved in the Google Drive. Because the advantage there, when you answer directly in the Google Drive, it it automatically saves your responses you know, every few seconds. Okay, so. You don't have to worry about uh, having to save it because the, in, as you know, in Google Drive, uh, documents, forms, and spreadsheets will automatically be saved every few seconds. Okay. Abo, may I ask, for, Bong, uh, if can they erase? I mean, in, while they are filling the Google Drive, like it's going to be saved, and then they think, na ah, mali pala, I will change the narrative. Yes, can they, they can edit ba? Oh, yes, so yeah. you can edit back. Though. So, so we'll we'll use an example, for example. So, as, as, uh, just just to proceed, ano? So, the four major domains or categories that we are going to rate will be the following, and they are highlighted in red. So, number one is data gathering, twenty five percent. Number two is approach to diagnosis, also twenty five percent. Three is case formulation, another twenty five percent, and then number four is case management, another twenty five percent. For a total, of course, of 100%. So each category of uh, uh, of, of uh, rating will have subcategories. Okay. So, for example, in data gathering, the first subcategory, psychiatric interview, which is five percent. Okay. So um, the first descriptor is effectively and efficiently introduces oneself and explains the purpose of the interview and the process, thereby eliciting informed consent establishes rapport. So if you think it merits um, one of, or five, just put five. Okay. So makita nyo, no, the heading is score boxes. Then, then you also see that at the top, okay, there's a guide as to the scoring system. So number one is unacceptable. Number two is poor. Three meets expectations. Number four is good. Number five is excellent. So you can always look up and then check on this. So for example, so I've already written five, and then as as uh, and then I went on to score on the second descriptor. Effectively maintains the flow of the interview while being sensitive to the patient's literacy, beliefs, and emotional and cognitive state. Co- uh, consistently picks up nonverbal cues from the patient by being facilitative and educational. Employs techniques like clarification, reflection, confrontation, and rational interpretations, and consistently demonstrates empathy compassion, respect, honesty, and integrity. So let's say I grade this as four. And then that as I move on to the third descriptor, I thought to myself no, um, that the first descriptor probably only deserves three. Okay, so, yun, so you can just go back, uh, uh, scroll up, or just use your cursor or your, arrow, your arrows on your uh, keyboard for you to be able to go up and down. So the third descriptor communicates to the patient effectively in a clear and simple language, an accurate summary and conclusion of the interview. So I can rate that, let's say, as three, okay? And then press enter. Always remember to press enter because otherwise the score is not impute, inputted until you press enter. You will also see that in the next column, there's a qualitative descriptor that will appear. So number three is, as you know, a score of three meets expectations. A score of four is good. A score, again, a score of I mean, five ito, 
five. So five is excellent. So this will also guide you. No? So you can look both at the number, uh, the numeric value, and the qualitative descriptor. So that if if, if uh, so that you uh, so that you can feel more confident as to whether it aligns as far as your rating is concerned. Now in the third column, yung percentage, yun yung mga weights. Okay, so each descriptor has a particular weight, and then multiplying the score with the weight, the percentage weight, will give us the weighted score. So yung weighted score in the fourth column will be the ones that will be total. Okay. Um, kung mapapansin nyo, dun sa, balik lang tayo po dun sa cover page, ano, sa, sa, mapapansin niyo na may kita nyo na nag, nag add up automatically yan. No? So like in this case, na although three descriptors pa lang ang nasasagot natin, nag add up na siya ng point, uh, 0 0.2. Uh, to 21 points, okay? Uh, please, ito po because of the genius of Dr. Enrique sa pagtsatsaga niya to come up with this grading sheet. Kaya po nakikita niyo, nag-automatic nag-automatic calculate and at the same time, nag-automatic ng pag-add ng total scores. Kasi po, this will also help facilitate the deliberations that the certification board will do at the end of the day. Okay. Kaya nga po, yung, if you do the printed PDF form, PDF uh, version, um, when you write it manually, okay lang po yun, ano, you scan it and then take a picture and send it to us. Tapos si Dr. Enriquez na po yung magmamanual ng calculation. Okay, so ganun po katsaga si Dr. Enriquez. Okay, okay so just to proceed, ano, so the uh, second subcategory is history taking, which is 5%. Uh, first descriptor is obtains accurate, relevant information necessary to arrive at a diagnosis, case formulation, and proper management. This next is reports all the essential components of the history in a succinct, logical, systematic, organized, and clear manner. And the following are essential components, general data, presenting problem, history of the present illness, uh, psychiatric and medical history, social and developmental history, family history, pre-morbid functioning and personality, occupational history, sexual history, substance history. So this will guide you in terms of what you will expect from the examinee. Just to inform you, last week, po, so last Wednesday, we also met with the examinees and we also went through the rubrics with them. So they also have a copy of these rubrics. We explained these rubrics as well to them. So they have an idea what would be the expectations of the examiners, of the panelists, as far as their performance during the oral examination. Okay, so for example, they did not elicit sexual history and substance use history. Okay, so you can you can rate them on that because those are uh, expected uh, items that they would need to be able to extract from the patient during the interview. Okay. Um, next subcategory would be objective assessments. So this will include the MSE, physical examination, and neurological examination. We would like to emphasize that the MSE, PE, and neuro should be targeted. Um, what we mean is that if, if, the, if the candidate chooses to do a comprehensive MSE, PE, and neuro, I mean, they'd like to do everything. I mean, that's fine. Okay. But of course, it can work to their detriment because it, it, uh, it may take up a lot of their time. So that it, it's all right if they don't do everything as long as it is targeted. So that means they should, have, you know, they should be able to explain to you why they only chose to do this and not the other. Okay? For example, like did not, they did not ask the patient to, to walk to check for gait okay? or they did not do certain cranial nerves or they did not uh, ask for test judgment or social judgment um, because they wanted to focus on other areas of examination. That, that they're allowed that, okay? But as long as if you ask them later on or clarify with them why they did this and not that or why did they not do that, as long as they can explain, then that would, I mean, to us that would be acceptable because what our expectations are primarily in terms of targeted uh, um, MSE, neuro and physical examinations okay uh, the second major diagnostic uh, ca sorry the second major category was the approach to diagnosis and the first subcategory would be diagnosis which is 12 percent so uh yes dr ranchetta you have a question uh yes po um just what we would what we would be instructing our residents like for example if the examinee would say po 
Kasi diba, they're supposed to just instruct what to do yes. in the PE and the neuro mm-hmm. and the resident should not be, like for example, sabihin ng examinee, please do cranial nerve 1 test. Mm-hmm. So parang ano yung pwedeng sabihin ng resident to mm-hmm. guide the examinee? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, the residents can just ask. Uh, th- thank you, Doctora Ancheta, for the question. That uh, forgot to. Oh, I overlooked that. Okay. Now, um, just to explain to the panelists, as I mentioned earlier, diba, when I introduced the residents, they are there to assist not just us, okay, but also the examinees. For example, as you know, in terms of the objective assessments, there may be instances that the examinee will request the. Uh, will request the resident to do certain maneuvers. But as, as Dr. Ranchetta has pointed out, the examinee should be very specific about what they uh, what they would like the resident to do. For example, uh, like if they want to test for smell, they should ask the resident first, do you have anything that you can use to test for smell? Like do you have a, 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 a tiny vial of coffee by your side. Okay. So things like that, like, do you have a neuro hammer? Uh, even for the mental status examination, diba? uh, I mean, uh, you may have to ask, the, the examinee may have may uh, need the, the patient to do certain maneuvers, okay? Uh, but the thing is, uh, the, the examinee has to be very specific as to what they will request the resident to do, okay? Because we, we, we saw last year, that uh, uh, there were a, a, a lot of the residents were really very good about assisting to the point that they were sort of uh, going beyond. The, in, um, uh, so sometimes if it's not too much, not too extensive, I mean, uh, it, 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 it would depend on the panel if they would accept that or they would restrict it, okay? Um, as you know, one member of the certification board will be there to assist the panel. But at the end of the day, the panel, together, uh, part- particularly because the panel will be a chair and then two members, okay, it essentially will be up to the panel in terms of how they're going to decide. About it. So what we're providing right now is just guidance uh, based on their experience from last year. But remember, we have a member of the certification board who will be there to assist you. So you can ask them also for your guidance. Uh, or clarification about uh, how to proceed in those instances. Okay. Um, I hope I was able uh, to answer. Yes, sir. Uh, so basically, for, uh, po, okay, sir. lang po ba if the resident would say, um, what particular test po? <laughs> yes. Like, na lang. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes, the resident can clarify what exactly do you want me to do. Okay. Um, uh, for example, then sa physical exam, may mga nakita din kami examinees nagpapalpate ng abdomen habang nakaupo yung I mean, pinapapalpate yung abdomen ng pasyente habang nakaupo yung pasyente. <laughs> okay. So, kung, kung yun ang pinagagawa ng examinee, then the resident has to follow. Kasi may mga resident na ipahihiga nila yung pasyente, di ba? Because that's the best, that's the correct way to palpate the abdomen, di ba? So, yun yung what we mean na uh, the resident lang just, just but, they, but if they if the resident is unsure about what the instructions were, they can always clarify with the examinee. Okay. Because we also need to remember that the examinee is very nervous, okay? In, in fact, during the written exams, Yung mga examinee po natin, yung iba, nakakalimutan nila yung left from right, yung front from back. Okay, kaya, but there are times we have to give the instruction several times, you know, and we understand that because they're very nervous uh, during this period of time. So that's why we try to assist them as best as we can without, without facilitating too much. Okay. So thank you very much for the question, Dr. Ancheta. So to proceed, the you know, approach to diagnosis, uh, first uh, subcategories, uh, the diagnosis itself. So extracts relevant and precise data and organizes in a systematic manner to arrive at a DSM-5 and ICD-10 diagnosis. So ngayon, ang gagamitin pa po natin is DSM-5 and ICD-10. Okay. Next is synthesizes data to arrive at a coherent and valid interpretation. Emphasizes all important details, discusses clearly and concisely. Okay. Integrates relevant epidemiological, epidemiological 
neurological and research findings that are related to the patient's case, discusses updated uh, related literature, discusses clearly and precisely. In a lot of um, presentations or discussions by the examinee, this is one aspect that they often overlook, the third descriptor, you know, about relevant epidemiological and research findings. So they may not present that, uh, they may not mention it during their presentation. But during the Q&A, you, you as a panelist may opt to um, ask this, okay? And you may grade accordingly. Again, that, that's up to you. But it, uh, uh, because that, that, that's the purpose of the open for on the interpolation you know, for you to be able to clarify uh, what the that what the examinee mentioned or what the examinee stated or presented and then a request for uh, additional information from them if you see fit especially if you feel that there were some aspects of the presentation that were lacking okay, okay. okay. then the then the, then of course from the um, primary diagnosis then we go to differentials. Uh, same similar thing, you know, uh, what you would expect from the diagnosis you would see in the differentials. But particularly in the differentials, we would, um, would, we would expect like a logical discussion of how they arrived at these differentials and then you're ruling in, ruling out. And then, of course, you know, how they arrived at the final diagnosis. Okay? So the yung, yung logic behind the discussion. Um, diagnostic aids, five uh, percent. Mostly, uh, the examinees will focus on laboratory examinations. Okay, but again, uh, the, the point here is that these are relevant uh, diagnostic uh, examinations. I mean, not just anything that they would think of, but something that was pertinent or relevant. Okay, um, a lot of times uh, they often forget psychological testing. Okay. Um, but it's up to you again as a panel to raise this as a point, or you can just uh, you know adjust your grade accordingly if they uh, omit or overlook certain aspects. Okay. Uh, third major. Hi, Pong. Uh, yes. Pong, uh, before you proceed, uh, there's a question here from Doctor Chita. Uh, we are only allowed to uh, score with whole numbers, oh, oh. no decimal points. Um, okay. Un unfortunately po, um, actually that's a good point. Ano? Kaya lang before kasi, uh, before we had the seven point rating system, parang Likert type, okay? But yun na nga, one of the things that we learned during our sessions with uh, uh, the head of NTPC is that that's not necessary, okay? Um, whole numbers are, are appropriate. Kasi nga, each item kasi has a specific weight Okay, and that yung weighted, yung weight na yun, yung percentage actually takes care of the point system, no? So, and, that's, and, and it's often going to be easier for us to, you know, uh, so it's yeah. like, um, kasi di ba to Romy nag-round off din to, eh, no? Uh, if you put a so, yun, no? so, round uh, it off, yeah. pero pag nag-compute siya, it will compute according to the, ano, to the decimal, uh, oh, pero we do not recommend, ano. So, uh, so pwede, kaya lang pwede mag, uh, mag, maglalabas din siya ng, ng gold number. Okay. Sige. But thank you very much, Dr. Asita, for typing in the question. Ay, Ay, mag -open uh, another question we have from uh, Dr. Joan Henwino is, when we finish filling up the Google Drive form, we just press uh, exit, X and exit, or how do we send it back to you now? Okay. Okay. Sige. If it's the Google Drive, uh, as soon as you're done, it, it, it will say up uh, there, uh, save to drive. All you have to do is X, exit the top, and you're done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. May kita nyo, no, with, the, with, the, with everything that's being, it, we try to, to do it sa, sa Google, ano, Google Drive, like documents, forms, or sheets. You just look at the top, makikita nyo last changes saved. If you see that, if it says last changes saved, that means everything that you did up to that point has already been saved, okay? Um, so, so that means you can simply exit as uh, Dr. Enriquez has said. So just make sure that, that you, you see that yung last changes saved. 
Okay, and then you're you're good to go. And you don't have to send it to us because it's in the Google Drive. So Dr. Enriquez, so Romy will just uh, go into the Google Drive of uh, the specialty board to be able to access that. Okay. Yeah, so, Bong, and also if they and uh, put try uh, entering a score of one or two, red ang lumalabas. Mm -hmm. So at least make sure na walang natirang white dun sa score. Uh -oh. Kasi pag may natirang white, kulang na score yung uh, examine. Mm -mm. Kaya ito, no, pag magiging pink, no? well, red yung number, tapos pink yung background. Okay. Yun. Um, kaya ano, sanayin nyo lang na 3, 4, 5. <laughs> okay. Sige. So, eh, um, so um, another question. Ngayon ko lang natapan. Ah, yes. Yeah. That's because the good and the excellent just white apart. But not really excellent. How will I express? As, as Romy has mentioned, si Tano, you can still put uh, um, a decimal. Okay. That's, it, it will compute naman din. Kaya lang mag appear lang dun sa score box will be the the whole number. Whole number. Yeah. Okay. okay no further questions. Kasi pag 1% lang yung weight um, it may not, I mean, can still make a difference kasi but pag tinotal natin, baka that, that fraction will be the, the, the fraction that will help the, the, the individual pass, you know? So, yes. So, so okay. So, okay. So, proceed, you know? So, case formulation. So, again, this is the third one, third major category. So, 25%. Um, again, these are the guides, you know? So, percent all available, accurate and relevant, biopsychosocial, including cultural and spiritual data relevant to developing a case formulation. Emphasizes all important information, the presenting problems, problem list, main problem of concern, predisposing factors, precipitating factors, psychodynamic factors, environmental, cultural, spiritual, and other biopsychosocial influences in a treatment plan based on the case formulation. Next is discusses an accurate and relevant biopsychosocial case formulation that's uh, in its impact on therapeutic goals following a logical and coherent approach. Presents a coherent, concise, and well-organized synthesis-based discussion on sound theoretical concepts, integrates biopsychosocial uh, data excellently, and then finally recognizes the value of his or her emotional responses to the patient and integrates it in the case formulation in transference, counter-transference issues. It just occurred to me that um, since last year, I know that uh, a lot of institutions are already using this rubrics you know, for their own assessment of their residents, di ba? Pag nagpapa oral examination to the residents, and, which is well and good. So this prepares the residents as well in terms of taking the diplomat oral exams. And at the same time, it uh, also pardon, it also serves as a good practice for the consultants who volunteer as uh, panelists for the or diplomat oral examinations. And then finally, yung case management, again, 25%. First sub major subcategory, general principles of case management, designs and justifies individualized treatment goals. Okay, um, Individualized, that means it has to be very specific or pertinent to the patient. Um, we, 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 we've seen several um, examinees provide treatment goals or treatment plans that are very broad, you know, um, and what we expect is that if, even during the discuss, if during their presentation, they should already be able to, you know, make it very relevant or pertinent to the case at hand. It doesn't, because there are times there, there are those who expect that uh, or hope that the panelists will will ask about it during the Q and A. You know, but the thing is, you know, you can you can already expect them to uh, present it during their initial discussion. So next descriptor synthesizes the individualized treatment plans that are clear, rational, realistic, achievable, and time-bound. Okay, applies evidence-based practice guidelines. Okay, so it, so alam din to na examinee that uh, they they should be able to sort of quote from best pra uh, practice guidelines. We even told them that uh, we even reminded them that the PPA has uh, consensus practice guidelines that they can use as part of their discussion, okay. And then next is, 
pre prevention and risk reduction strategies. Kasi ito yung, um, di ba, may primary, secondary, and tertiary, di ba? Uh, so, hindi lang in terms of active, eh, hindi lang diagnostic and active, but also in terms of uh, prevention and at the same time, rehabilitation. Lastly, recognizes and justifies the need for consultation or referral to special medical and psychiatric concerns in relation to the psychiatrist's limitation, discusses this in a clear and concise manner. So we also expect them to be able to put forth some, some suggestions in terms of if there are aspects of the case that need to be referred to, let's say, um, may, may legal aspects, so would this case need to be referred to a forensic psychiatrist? Okay, So, so, so something like that. Or um, the patient has an, an, an uh, na de na lang na detect that this, this patient has a murmur, okay, uh, has, uh, has wheezes, no? and has had, has had, has had uh, no prior medical consultation. So this could also be part of the uh, plans of the exam. Okay. And <clears throat> that's the reason why we, we still include the physical examination as part of the uh, general assessment of the patient. Then biologic management, oftentimes they just, um, the examinee would just mention pharmacotherapy, okay? but we also expect them to mention other somatic therapies. You know? So in particular, diba, uh, we, we, like we already uh, have TMS, RTMS, you know? but also in, in the mid-year convention, diba, mentioned what was already made about deep brain stimulation. So hopefully if they had attended and list uh, the, the mid-year and then listen to that lecture that they'll be able to utilize the information that was provided there. Um, yung pharmacotherapy, as you know, of course, it should be evidence-based. There should be a clear rationale behind the choice of that particular medication, that class of drug, and also about the dosing. Psychotherapeutic management, uh, explanation about the choice of psychotherapeutic uh, intervention. And also, hopefully, that they'll be able to um, be more specific about how they intend to apply uh, the technique of psychotherapeutic intervention that they're going to mention. A lot of the examinees just mention it uh, in general that they, they would say, I will do this, okay? Like, as we know, like the term cognitive behavioral therapy, that's, that's very broad. There's so, so many specific um, activities that are included here. So th the expectation would be that uh, in the next part, in the next descriptor, that they'll be able to uh, be more specific as far as what they intend to actually do. Uh, psychosocial resources, finally, you know, again, this is often overlooked. I guess one reason that this, this tend to be overlooked is because of time issues, okay? So they uh, tend to focus more on the major descriptors, but of course, this is also important, so that's why we include it. So this will include family and community resources, occupational resources, alternative or non-traditional interventions, so the mga complementary and alternative medicine. Then finally, yung mga ethical issues. Now, this one, Hardly, any, hardly anyone raises this, okay. Um, but, you know, uh, if they do, I mean, well and good. Um, but unfortunately, you know, there's a tendency to overlook this as well. So that in support, Sally Del Valle and Renesa Maniego. So each one of them will contact you depending on on whether, whether, whether you sit within the panel that they are going to cover. So they will they will be assisting you also reviewing this with you uh, during the, by the time you log in and before the examination starts. Okay, so yun yung time that uh, the rubrics can also be reviewed and then the timelines as well. No. So, so thank uh, you. We also question. have uh, another question for Bong from Dr. Joan Rafael. Just to clarify, we are only given 10 minutes for clarificatory questions for history, PE, MSE, and approach to diagnosis. Mm -mm. Pero in our experience, it becomes very fluid and flexible. That's why we assign 30 minutes for the second set of clarificatory questions. So that will be 40 minutes in total. You may not be able to ask everything during the first 10 minutes, but the second set of clarificatory questions is 30 minutes. So you have um, more time to, uh, no, to, if you have additional questions, pala, you can do it there. Tapos yung exit conference, nabanggit din ni Sally, you know, that's actually 
parang buffer din namin yun. The exit conference will really not take up 15 minutes. At most siguro, 2 minutes lang naman. Kasi the exit conference basically asking the examinee what his what her feelings are, his, his or her impressions, how they see. Yung mga ganun lang naman yun. Eh, no? um, it's, not, it's not a discussion thing. Kaya actually we can extract 10 minutes from, from that uh, but what we try to do lang kasi to manage the, num the, the the amount of questions as best as we could. But pero we, we are very flexible naman. So that the times that we presented are guides, okay? And they can be very fluid. But we hope to at least end on time in, in the naman din Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you Joan. Thanks. Thanks, Joan. I, another one from Tante. Will 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 we still be creating Viber chat groups for each of the groups of panelists? I think in your, in a, in address Mabong earlier, right? That, that that should have been created already. We, we we intend to create it at least the Friday before the week before. Before, yeah. That should mm -hmm. like for the panelists for sep for September sixteen. May Viber group na dapat kayo. Um, just to clarify, no, because we're we're not creating the Viber groups right away because our experience last year was because it created a lot of confusion. So what we plan to do this year is that ito nga, for the sep September 16 exam, the panel, uh, the Viber group should have been created at the latest nitong Monday, you know, uh, September 12. Uh, because really because there's a lot of uh, items that we need to provide the panelists. But there also There will also be a separate... Uh, Viber group for the institutions, no, uh, including the training officers and the residents. Because, for example, um, may mga items din na isisende that need to be, let's say, yung consent form, yung acknowledgement receipts, okay, uh, for for the, kasi the pay the patients will be provided an allowance, okay, so they need to sign, up. and that's why um kaya kailangan namin din nga yung and, and this is one of the areas that. The residents can assist us. Okay. Um, Dr. Bong, may I say something? This mm -hmm. year, we are giving 1,000 as patients' allowance as approved by PPA. So, also, we, we plan to give it on the same day. So, uh, for the institutions, I hope there's one, only one resident uh, as point person, and the GCash sent to us so that we can send right away the patients' allowance. Mm -hmm. Yes, so thank you, Sally, for mentioning that. Kaya, kaya we were very grateful last year to the residents who assisted us kasi talagang, ano, they were very masigasig ba yun as far as yung pa, para makaabot dun sa pasyente. Okay. So, um, SPMC, ang, ang, proctor, ang proctor nyo si Dr. Buot, Michi, wala pa kayong Viber group for SPMC. Magawin ko buka ka ngayong gabi. I'm so sorry, but I just got so swamped with so many things. I will, and uh, don't worry because I will communicate to to the ones who will participate in that section. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Bong, okay. uh, we uh, we have another question from Dr. Glenda Basubas. Yeah. Hi, Glenda. Hi. Uh, good evening. I would just like to clarify lang na... Uh, if ever, kasi alam mo naman coming from Cebu, uh, they, they, our examiners don't really speak that well sa Tagalog. So there will be an um, resident will help in interpreting just in case they get, you know, um, mm -hmm. a patient coming from Manila. Yes. Uh, thank you, Glenda. Um, and actually, that, that, um, I'm glad you raised that because last year, Diba Romy, that, that was also a point of concern for us. You know? but, but we were very fortunate that the training institutions, the host institutions, were very remarkable as far as choosing the perfect candidates. All, all the patients that uh, were used... Uh, <laughs> okay, all the patients that, that uh, the host institutions provided us were... were the, the best, you know. Kaya, it's not Tagalog, they speak English. Oh, 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 yun, yun. Kaya, th thank you very much, Glenda, for it. So we will also have um, that as a point of consideration. Sige, thanks, thank you, Mom. Len. Uh, 
All right, no further questions so far. So I think we can thank you very much, Sal, for that uh, discussion on the timelines. Um, and uh, now we'll proceed with the discussion of Dr. Rami for the virtual setup. So, sabi ko kay Romy, nakamute siya, nakamute din pala. <laughs> nakamute din. Okay. Sorry. Parang the blind so, leading the blind. Regarding the mute virtual leading setup, the mute. Uh, of course, everyone, right now, everyone is already good at doing Zoom. Uh, just like when we're uh, uh, attending anything. So, expert na kayo sa Zoom. So, we don't really have to... Uh, I'll give you the technical issues regarding Zoom. But as much as possible, please avoid desktop computers because when there is a brownout, they, they get turned off. Uh, we we prefer, we recommend using a laptop. Uh, maybe an iPad would be good enough also because you're not going to type anything on the uh, screen anyway because you just need to see the examinee. For as long as you have... Uh, you're able to type uh, to to you're able to score uh, the examinee's uh, performance uh, on a separate sheet of paper or on a separate gadget. Okay, uh, the Google Sheets may not work that well using tablets or uh, iPads. So uh, we strongly recommend if you're going to directly uh, encode on Google Sheets please use a, a laptop so that you can just split the screen. Now, uh, this is the what uh, Bong mentioned. Uh, actually, supposedly, you're, you, you're supposed to write the... Romy? The uh, the yeah. Romy, uh, everyone, can you go to speaker view so you can see Dr. Enriquez's... Yeah. Uh, so so uh, find the capacity. Yes, ang taas ng finding capacity for... Hindi, <laughs> ito, yun. Ito. Okay. Uh, Nakapin naman yata. So, mukhang makita nila. But uh, you can put skip speaker view. Now, uh, regarding the uh, the sheets, the Excel, uh, we're, the night before, I'm going to send you the link to the Google Sheet and with your name on it and with the name of the examinee, the venue and time, so that you don't have to write anything anymore. All you have to just type would be click the, the grading sheet or the rubric, the second tab, the one in red, okay? So, uh, and it will lead you to this, uh, to this folder, uh, to this file. Uh, please encode only on the... Uh, column of the score, okay? Uh, and the others, three more columns will just follow. They will auto-compute depending on what score you put in. Uh, last year, uh, others would have uh, put their scores on the third and fourth column, but still we were able to, uh, to do the computations anyway. But uh, as much as possible, just put on the your scores on the second column, the one in red. Okay. Uh, as mentioned by Bong, uh, the last column, the white column, is for us to be able to write uh, any comments regarding a very low score or very excellent score, uh, commendations, etc. You, if if you can type better, but again. If you're uh, using your uh, pencil and paper, oh, we do not recommend pencil. Please use ball pen so that uh, when you uh, take a picture of it, we can still uh, we can still read it uh, when it is sent by a Viber. So if you write the comments on uh, on the paper, actually we will we will save that screenshot. On the patients uh, on the examinees folder, so that when they fail, they will know uh, the comments presented to them. 
Uh, you may also download an Excel file on a separate computer and uh, grade there. And as you see in this example, in this Excel file, nakasulat na yung pangalan ng name ng examinee, nakapangalan na rin yung panelist. So the, and then uh, on the top of the green bar there, uh, the file name involves the name of the examinee plus the uh, panelist para hindi na kami nalilito sa filing. So, uh, paper grading, print out, take a picture or scan, send it to us by PDF, send it by Viber, send it by uh, uh, Gmail, okay, to any of our accounts or to the SBPP accounts. The account that, the Gmail account that was that in, uh, confirmed or invited you to be a participant in the as a panelist as much as possible completed 30 within 30 minutes kindly send us the uh, files uh, well uh, during face to face uh, we try to make sure that all the blanks are filled um, nowadays after we lose you sometimes you don't answer the phone so it, it, we might find it difficult uh, to contact you and uh, to to fill in the blanks that you might have left uh, uh, in the score sheet. So, uh, most of all, for November 11, uh, we need the scores as soon as possible because as soon as the last examinee completes the exam, we deliberate and we deliver uh, November 4 pa lang. November 4, as soon after we deliberate, we send emails to everyone who passed and who failed. Okay, so uh, uh, we, we are not stuck with Google Sheets, Excel, you can even use paper, or you can even summarize them into a smaller table, basta lang naka-encode yung, yung, uh, yung code nung bawat score. So, and send us to, to us by Viber. And whatever you send to us will be uh, included in the participants uh, folder uh, in our Google Drive. So when you send all your documents to us, you will see we will still copy paste everything here. Okay, so that after copying everything in, in their respective uh, file, it will turn out to be like this. So, uh, examiner 1, examiner 2, examiner 3, then the average. Okay. Oh, by the way, this is what we will show to the examinee when, if they fail and they wish to see how they were rated. Okay. And usually, we will not see your name. We If it's uh, pictures taken, we will crop the picture and we'll just paste them on the blanks provided for or it may be in the bottom of the entire page okay so uh bong mentioned that if you have an average grade of two or less in any of the four domains ang domains i one two three four data gathering approach to diagnosis, case formulation, case management. If the average of the three examinees, a panelist, uh, is less than two for each, for any of the four domains, the examinee is considered failed. Okay? So, yun yung explanation kanina na, yung two for, per domain. Even Although it's difficult to pass already if you have a 2 in any of the domains, but still, automatically failed na yon Because uh, it merely says that uh, the three exam panelists agree that the, that the examinee was really in a blunder in discussing uh, or in performing during the examination. Of course, our objective in providing the examination is not for them to fail, uh, we want we we want to get to know them if they are uh, competent to be psychiatrists in the real case scenario. 
So we kindly recommend the following. Please grade the parameters as you observe them. Because sometimes uh, after the examination, kuminsan manguhula ka na lang dun sa first part. O kaya we've seen 3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3. Pare-pareho na lang yung score. O kaya 4-4-4-4-4-4. Uh, alam mo na nang uhula sila. So please, uh, kindly, as you observe them, uh, you can score. But again, since it's digital and you have uh, eraser with your, uh, you can always edit your paper and pencil uh, thing, uh, you can always modify your score before submitting. Okay. So, uh, uh, and also make sure that the columns for the scoring are all in either uh, green or uh, red, okay? Because if there is anything white, it means you missed one, something, uh, a score there. So, yun lang po yung issues namin sa grading tips. Oh, by the way, unlike in face-to-face, -face, you, you have a feeling how your co-panelists are scoring. Okay, but here we, we don't know how they're scoring. You will only have an inkling of how they're scoring because of the way they talk to the to the examinee. So uh, we're technically not allowed to to pick into the scores of our uh, fellow panelists. Okay, uh, which is difficult actually. So uh, connectivity as much as possible. Uh, broadband Wi-Fi, and uh, for purposes of continuity, we recommend that you, <coughs> your cell phone uh, should also be paired to your laptop uh, as a mobile hotspot so that in case the uh, broadband internet in your house uh, goes into shutdown for whatever reason, uh, your cell phone will take over. Uh, by the way, uh, the panelists will be only be looking at Zoom. In the Zoom, there's only the patient, the examinee, the three other panelists, and any or, any or uh, all the other members of the board in the same Zoom account. There will be three different Zoom so it's not like we'll accept everyone into one Zoom account and we will put them ev everyone into breakout rooms. So there will be three different Zoom accounts. So the chances of uh, Murphy's Law happening are minimal. Okay. Second way to prevent the Zoom account from shutting down, as soon as the the host, uh, board examiner, uh, turns on the Zoom account and uh, the chair of the committee of the panelists or any of the younger members of the panelists who are more comfortable with Zoom will be uh, designated also as co-host. So right now I'm host to this account. If for one reason or another my computer sh shuts down, uh, the, the Zoom meeting will still continue because all the other members of the board are co-hosts. Then when I log on again, I'll still be in the same meeting. Okay, so if we, if we don't do that, once I, my computer shuts down, the entire meeting disappears. So uh, we already have redundancy set up. Uh, there's another issue also. Yeah, some connection we mailed. Uh, the link have, have, I'm sure have been sent to you by email or by by verb by the uh, board examiner in charge. Okay, so uh, as much as possible, uh, we would like to place the the Zoom uh, display under speaker view so that we can see the entire uh, body language of the patient as well as the body language of the uh, examinee, okay? 
So, uh, as much as possible when we are doing, uh, when we are attending as panelists, we would uh, strongly recommend that everyone keeps their video on during the, for the entire duration of the uh, examination uh, because it's different if the exam and uh, if the examinee is looking at just our still pictures so uh when he's explaining when the examinee is uh, discussing he's also getting uh, visual cues whether the panelists are uh, understanding what he or she is saying okay oh by the way uh, uh during the interview and physical examination we have a tendency to to be looking at our cell phone uh, doing facebook uh, our attention to whatever we're grading is also uh distracted so please uh for the as a favor to the examinee okay uh, to prevent the examinee from being failed uh unfairly let us kindly uh give full attention uh during the entire uh performance of the examinee as, as well as during the entire discussion so i i have found out that if i do not listen to the history taking and the examination uh the entire discussion does not mean anything to me okay so <clears throat> Please use ambient lighting, particularly overhead room lights, uh, because if you use, uh, if your back is on the window, uh, the, they will only see your silhouette. So if you have to, uh, there's no other way, uh, you can use ring lights in front of you uh, to prevent uh, backlighting, okay? So unless turn off everything and uh, close the drapes uh, so that uh, there will be no backlight. Climate control, uh, this is for the written exam. Uh, so you'll be staying in the room for about three to four hours. So please make yourself comfortable. And as much as possible, kindly uh, avoid using electric fans that are directed to your computer's mic because we will see a lot we will hear a lot of uh noise buzzing sound okay so uh yeah that's it the examinee may use a clipboard uh, that is plain uh light color uh we we want it white uh, it is preferred that there is no information in front and back okay uh if the examinee wants to outline his discussion he has to do it while while he's already in front of us not not having a, a codico of the grading sheet because if he has a codico of the grading sheet uh uh that's already unfair okay uh MMSEs, people can memorize MMSE, even the drawing. Uh, even if you don't have MMSE, uh, you can do MMSE by, by memory, mini mental state examination. If you want to do uh, the, uh, the specific test, okay? So six pieces, uh, five pieces of paper uh, for the notes and uh, you may need to ask them to show that all the uh, papers are clean. So they, they're allowed power banks, okay, uh, mineral water, uh, beverage, uh, saucer for food, uh, for emergency use, okay. Uh, I think one of them is pregnant, may need to go to the bathroom every now and then. Uh, we will ask one of the panelists of the same sex uh, to, to follow her to the bathroom on, in a breakout room, okay, without necessarily showing herself, as long as she's carrying a cell phone uh, uh, just to 
make sure that she's not communicating with anybody. And medicines should be sh placed on the laptop if necessary. So uh, there will be an emergency contact be because since they're isolated, if something happens, uh, we know whom to call uh, to be able to help them out. Okay, uh, because some, sometimes they hyperventilate. As much as possible, the examinees advice to have bathroom breaks. All members of the uh, certifying board will be logged on to a three o'clock a Google Meet on the right side of the patient, uh, of the examinee. So we will see only the three examinees plus five members of the board. The Google Meet uh, account on a laptop and on a cell phone is just to make sure that if the laptop breaks down, uh, we will still be there to see and help the examinee troubleshoot. Okay, so it okay. There will always be one a board examiner to host the Zoom meeting to troubleshoot technical issues, address concerns of panelists, patient, and examinee, and monitor the time. Every now and then, we might uh, send on the chat uh, that five minutes to go and or something like that, or time time up. Uh, so, a uh, kind reminder to the uh, panelists as well as to the examinee. So, uh, sometimes the examinees are so overwhelmed with interviewing uh, that they, they lose, they, they forget the time. So, they're going to have an analog clock in front of them. Okay. So, uh, for patients, there will be technical requirements also. The patient should have an in, informed consent. Uh, patient should have adequate breakfast before activity. Uh, decent under should be in hospital gown or at least uh, decent clothes. Okay. Patient uh, will be asked to sit in a chair assisted by a resident. In some institutions, uh, the patient is alone in the room but the resident is outside with a separate uh, communi uh, communication device so that anytime the, examin the examinee calls for the resident, the resident can come in. Or sometimes the patient is sitting in the room, the resident is about uh, six feet away just sitting there and uh, uh, will just be listening for uh, instruction. So uh, we prefer, again, a laptop uh, with redundancy in, uh, in uh, connectivity, uh, one for broadband and another for Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, the audio file should be loud enough for the patient to hear. Okay, so uh, from the laptop itself, uh, if there is a need to have an external speaker, it's up to the resident if the patient is hard of hearing. So uh, the patient will be interviewed as to perform tasks to allow the examinee to gather evidence to make an appropriate diagnosis, okay? A glass of water or maybe a, a little food or snacks may be given as necessary. So the psychiatry resident will be responsible to set up the room the day before, preferably on Thursday morning at 8 in the morning. Uh, uh, the resident in charge will log on to the Zoom tech run. Uh, your, the, the hosts will send you uh, the Zoom account for tomorrow, which I sent to our group already in, uh, in our own Viber group. Okay, so the uh, resident is responsible for securing consent. He will also provide the laptop for the examination uh, and turning on the Zoom desktop application. Uh, Wi-Fi, and when requested by the examinee, the resident will perform tasks on the patient that are necessary to gather accurate information to make a diagnosis. So uh, as much as possible, 
the examinee will detail what the resident needs to do step by step to, to perform a particular task. Okay. So the extra phone of the resident should be on vibrate mode and audio off so that uh, uh, there would be no problem. The exit conference, we allow the examinee to express his or her feelings about how he or she performed. Uh, a lot of our colleagues usually will congratulate. Oh, oh that's a good a job well done and, and things like that. Uh, but again, uh, we don't, if I may, I may have given good grades, good, uh, but the other panelists might have given poor grades. So we are not yet sure if the examinee passed. Okay, so uh, we can commend the uh, examinee for a job well done on specific aspects, but let us not yet confirm whether he passed or failed because they will only know after the last examinee uh, completed the exam. So at this point, that's it. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Romy. Uh, we have a question from Dr. Trina de Laliana, whether the panelists will be given the chance to discuss amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a good question, Trina. Yes, um, during the time that the examinee is preparing their presentation, they will be brought to the breakout room. So that means the panelists will remain within the main room. So that will give you an opportunity to discuss. Mahaba din yun, that can be about 10-15 minutes then. So uh, there will be two times kasi that the uh, examinee will be brought to the breakout room for to prepare their presentation. So one, to prepare for the diagnosis and then the second one, to prepare for uh, yung ano na nila, yung management. So I, I hope that, uh, usually in our experience last year, that's the, that's the opportunity, that the, the panelists take that opportunity to to discuss amongst themselves. How many examinees do we have this year? We have 43. 30. Uh, uh, 39. 39 lang. 39, yeah. 39, 39 lang. May nag-back out. Oo, oh, oh, ayun pala. Oh. May mga institusyon susulatan ko, may mga nag-back out. <laughs> So I will have to reschedule the uh, young schedule. Um, yun, so I will write. I, I'll have. I'll, I'll, I'll write a follow up letter to sa mga institutions na na, na mawawalan ng ano ng examinees. So we we do apologize. Okay, meron pa po tayong additional questions or clarifications. I think most of them have been um, addressed naman along the way. So if none, uh, i just like to ask Dr. Bong and Dr. Romy if there's anything else of importance that we might have missed or any final directives or reminders before mm -hmm. we wrap up. Ano lang? Um, at, at the end of everything, pag natapos na kasi, we will follow up with you for your banking details so for the honorarium. Yun lang naman. Uh, so thank you for volunteering, but we would like to also compensate you a little bit for your uh, valuable time in assisting us. Yeah, so okay. again, again the closing remarks, Dr. Rami. The objective uh, in the this is not to fail. Uh, the objective is to assess them if they meet our expectations. Uh, of a uh, psychiatrist who will become our colleague. So, uh, so I hope everyone uh, has that particular mindset. Now, the, the board will be there every Friday, even if there is only one exam, uh, uh, one examinee, <laughs> uh, like next, uh, kailan ba yan? September 23, next week, there's only uh, one, two slots, one in the morning, one day. Uh, the board will make themselves available. If you have issues uh, regarding the tool, uh, kindly Viber us. Uh, 
uh, any one of us so that we can answer or you can email us. Uh, but please, uh, wag po kayong magalit pag after nung exam, uh, kukulitin namin kayo uh, to, lalo na kung may kulang. So we will uh, do all means to communicate with you within the hour. Uh, text, Viber, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, uh, Gmail, <laughs> and all those. Para lang masigurado na hindi na iwanan yung kaisa-isang score. Baka kung minsan yung kaisa-isang score na yun, eh, uh, nagpapasa na pala sa isang examine. So, <laughs> so yun lang. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, towards the deliberation, uh, for those in the... Uh, borderline in the gray zone, we will usually interview the examinee uh, and then we look at uh, other things that cannot be measured if there are reasons for us to say he deserves to pass. So, uh, maraming salamat for the love of PPA. Uh, it's uh, nice to see everyone uh, around. Uh, all of my friends also are here. Thank you. <laughs> so see you uh, over the next two months. A picture. Can everybody <laughs> please? Akasha ba tayo sa isang frame? Akasha ba sa'yo, Bong? Hindi, 49 lang. Hindi, 5 frames dapat. Sige, dalawa sa akin. Oh, sige, oo. Oh. Can, can everybody turn on their video, please? Turn on your video, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Happy na. Okay. One, two, three. Isa pa. Sa page two. One, two, three. Ah, one, two, three. Okay. Yan. So maraming maraming salamat po. Good night. Uh, may we ask the board to stay? Yes po. Bye-bye everyone. Maraming po.